One of the things that's key for artists today is public art and residencies and outreach. Traveling and lecturing and touring and doing all these things, which is impossible right now. And what's really interesting is a lot of us have animals or family or things that we, you know, uh, our garden or something, and things that we tend. And so we go back into that and that's really kind of the space that energizes us um, and allows us to go out and travel and, to, and to do, do these things. And, and I, I think it's probably really good, it's enriching because traveling can be exhausting, it's draining and talking to people about your work and yourself and which is great and exciting, you get paid for it of course, but um, in networking. But really the artist needs that time to re-energize and to focus and to do their thing and um, and the self-discovery and also rediscovery like reinventing yourself and finding out what's next and taking these inspirations that you've charted from ma you know mapping the planet and and you know instead of just feeding now you're you're turning it into something and you're baking and you're you're back in the kitchen again and in this moment of covid in the uh, covid crisis we need to adapt and we need to do anything we can as an artist to make things work and so when i got this invitation uh, there was no way that i was going to say no it's impossible or i don't have time because i knew immediately when i got the phone call um, that it had to happen in a matter of days to get this neon piece installed in this window. I was flipping through this AE catalog, you know, like you're always looking for inspiration, right? Where is it going to hit me? And I saw this tiny little black and white picture of this neon triangle that said abstract in your home. And it was uh, Pier Paolo Calzolori in 1970 made this uh, neon thing. Anyway, I looked at this triangle and I saw it as a teepee, right? Because that's my identity. It, like. If anything that we learn about art, it's we learn about ourselves. And I said, oh, it's not a TV. I should make one, which is inspiration. I mean, that's everything is stolen. Like nothing comes from the ether. Everything comes from something. It was a perfect idea. All I had to do was put some poles at the top and it, I, I've created a TV. So public art really needs collaboration. Uh, printmaking needs collaboration. And so when I did this neon, I collaborated with a neon person um, and this person was the neon person from New York City and they moved here and I met them and so we went through this whole process of size and explanation why tubing had to be this way and it had to be this at this scale and so we ended up scaling it larger than Piero's piece because where I wanted to put the text and how the text had to be put in there and then the color and he convinced me that it, he's like oh it needs to be red and I was like red okay all right, red, yeah. I was thinking red, but, you know, and he's like, and ruby red. And that's part of the collaboration. Like somebody knows their craft really well and you work with them and their influence makes things better. Their culture makes things better. Their ideas, because I'm a professional and they're a professional and when we get together, good things happen. But what I didn't realize on the phone call was how small the window was. <laughs> And I was like, ooh, how big is that? This is gonna be trouble, you know? So then I started talking to my mom about it and she was like, you don't have time to do that. Just give him a painting or something and hang that in there, you know? It, it's, it's just it's too much trouble, you know? I was like, no, you don't understand. Like, these are the, the, these are the times where we need to really uh, hunker down and, and adapt and make things work. And I think if they're interested in the neon, that's a good sign. And I think that neon's great. And I think it's, it's perfect for the museum and that should be its home. So if there's any way possible to make this happen, I'm gonna try it. And so I, I got the drawings and my son was there and he's a, he's a scientist, he's going, he's going to tech. And, I, and he had his calculator out. I was like, okay, so here's the dimension this way and here's the dimension this way. What's the dimension across here, you know? And he's like, oh gosh, we'll see, that's a little, little, you know. And he gives me that dimension, and I was like, oh, that's great, it's gonna fit. And then we realized to get into that space, it's even narrower. So he said, well, why don't you just mount it on panels? 
and then assemble it inside. You know, like if you just hinge it at the top and then once you get it inside, you can spread it out like this. And I was like, hey, that's brilliant, you know, which is collaboration, right? You're working with another professional, my son, the professional. Well, that's, that's what we did. We drew up this idea and laid it out. And then um, the next day, which was Monday, I called uh, Port Plastics in town. And I was like, what do you got? You know, do you have, and I was thinking clear initially. I thought it would be nice if the light from the neon came into the space as well. And they're like, no, there's no, there's no clear left because of the COVID. I was like, oh, that's right. All the acrylic is used for shields to keep us from spitting on each other. And I was like, what do you got? And, and they were like, well, we got white and black. <laughs> and, and I was like, white, mm, maybe, because that would really reflect the red, right? But then I decided on the black because um, I wanted it to blend into the background. Plus I thought, you know, it's gonna give it a little bit of like that romantic, uh, nightclub, you know, darkness, you know, like in the corner, private space, which I really feel like the piece has an intimacy about it. Stepping outside and looking in, I realized, oh my gosh, this is like science fiction. This is a rocket ship with a house in it. And it's not just any house, it's my house. And, and it's not just my house, but it's my culture's house. And it's a teepee, which is like one of the most perfect housing designs ever. The teepee can withstand hurricane forces and incredible environmental uh, conditions. And if it's put up properly and facing east, you can totally regulate the heat and uh, the temperature inside the space. It's just really fabulous. And so I thought, oh, what a perfect, this is like uh, V'ger, you know, the Voyager, you know, like where it's, we sent this, probe out into the universe with a gold-plated record on it to play uh, Jimi Hendrix for Martians or something somewhere. And I thought, that's what we need. We need to show them one of, the, one of our greatest inventions, one of our greatest discoveries, the teepee. You know? That should be in space. And so it, it, it looks like that. It looks like this encapsulated thing that's going to blast off. And when you look at it at night, it really has that kind of vision about it, you know, the way it glows in there in the space. And then as you move around it, then you can see what it is and it totally changes, which is wonderful. Any kind of work that you can move around and it changes is, is wonderful. As an artist, I understand the importance of my work. And if I put care into my work, I mean, this goes into the installation thing. Like the reason it works so well is because, uh, because I did my homework. Not every artist is taught or trained or learns right away that the more you show that you care about your work to somebody, the more it will be represented in the way that you've envisioned it. You know, the, the people that are, no matter how qualified they are and trained, they're only as good as you make them. And so when packing your work, when shipping your work, when installing your work, that sort of thing, instructions, maps, diagrams, you know, all these things help. It's part of doing my job as an artist. And speaking as a person of color or a marginalized person anyway, uh, I have to work twice as hard because I, I don't have that sense of entitlement that the museum or the gallery or the institution is, is going to manage everything, that they're going to pay for the shipping, that they're going to know how to install it, that they're going to put the glazing on, that whatever, like I have to do all that stuff myself. So I had to go the extra mile to, to make this happen. And going back to the climate that we're in anyway of, of racism and riots and, and, and change, hopefully it's change. Um, I want to believe that it's going to be change. Um, for my community, seeing over the last two years, right, the DAPL pipeline protests sparked something. And then Sam Durant putting up his platform, his hanging platform on native land, you know, caused some unrest. And then that artist dancing naked on a stage at PS1 with a headdress on, totally not her culture, rolling around on the floor was uh, alarming and 
cause some things to happen. And the Whitney Biennial had 11 Native Americans, and, um, which was fabulous. Uh, Garth Grinning Gallery in New York City is one of the premier galleries handling uh, contemporary Native art. A lot of young Native artists, really hot artists, and it is so exciting that yes, we are making things happen. And the National Gallery, yes, it's a coup. Something's happening there. And that now my mom is going to have a retrospective at the Whitney uh, in two years. She'll be the first Native American with a retrospective at the Whitney. Major show, which is really exciting. So out of this chaos, right, with all this stuff going on, my community seems to be thriving with little things popping up. And this is very positive, but we can't stop. We have to keep pushing this forward. The glass is half empty, always. As, as a, person, a marginalized person, a person of color, it never ends. You, you have to keep pushing. So I was listening to Democracy Now! Uh, the other day, and Jose posed this question to an activist, like, this, this is a hotbed right now. All these things are happening, so we're, we're enacting change and something's really gonna happen. And he said, well, you know, we, uh, back in the 60s, you know, we did the same, you know, it was the summer of love and we, we had all this activism going on and we we're gonna make change and we were gonna enact change and we were gonna do these things, and then nothing happened. And, and he said, so how is it different now, you know? And I, I agree with that to a point, and that is it takes more than power and it takes more than votes. It takes just people picking up the trash, you know, cleaning up after yourself and moving forward. And I'm working on it, and everybody I know is working on it. And maybe we can keep the momentum going, I hope.